that you must go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must experience the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When you have been born again, when you have been baptized within the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have everything it takes to have a victorious, glorious Christian life. The name that is above every other name, by the light of the word of God today, your eyes are open. There is something about giving sight to people that is crucial to their destiny. Welcome to another wonderful time in God's presence. God sent His word that was healed and delivered from destruction. Today in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the word of God that is coming in your direction will bring healing to you. Amen. We bring deliverance to you. Amen. The word of God will give you light and understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Another wonderful time in your presence. Be exalted, be glorified. Everything we do today, have your way. Mm -hmm. And let your name and your name alone be glorified. Spirit of the living God, take perfect and absolute control. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We want to appreciate God for his faithfulness. Um, we also welcome Pastor Toyin to the broadcast today. Thank you. Every time you've been around, it's been huge, huge blessing. And I know that everyone that we are the sound of our voice today will be blessed by the wisdom and the power of God through your uh, contribution. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, welcome, everybody, to the broadcast today. Um, the last time from the last series the pastor has been taking, he's been talking about a season of rest that God has promised um, his people, you and I, our family, and our career, a season of rest. So today we'll be actually talking about how can I enter, what are the conditions I need to meet before I enter a season of rest. And if you're a peradventure are watching this season for the first time, rest, if I'm defining it, is not a uh, a season of inactivity, but the season of aligning with the purpose of God. You know that there is something God has for me in my destiny. That was when Esther entered into the palace. That was when Joseph became the prime minister. Moses started leading his people and so on and so forth. So Pastor will be enlightening us along this line today. So sit back. I'm sure God has something to say to you. Thank you so much, Ma. Just like she said, um, your season of rest or your place of rest is actually your, the, the platform that God himself has ordained for the fulfillment of your destiny. You have a glorious destiny in God. It's when you step into your place of rest, that is when that glorious destiny starts to have fulfillment or concrete expression for the children of Israel that will be considering for some time entering into the promised land was their platform to start to fulfill all the vision that God has shared with their father oh fathers over 400 years before then so when you step into your land of rest or your season of rest that is when your destiny is being fully expressed. All that God has put in you, all that God has packaged you for, is being fully made manifest. And we are made to understand from the word of God, Joshua chapter 1 verse 13, the Bible made us to understand that the, uh, um, the children of Israel enter into rest when they took possession of the land that the Almighty God has promised to their father. He said, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, the Lord your God is giving you rest 
and is giving you this land. It's giving you rest and it's giving you this land. And that's the promised land. And um, for some time also in our previous broadcast, we've um, um, come up with some of the conditions that we must fulfill based on the journey of the Israelite. And one of the conditions that we discussed about the last time that he must have another spirit like that of Caleb. Caleb was the was just one of the two that left Egypt that made it to the promised land. And God said concerning Caleb that he had another spirit. So today we'll be talking about another condition. I don't know that Pastor Tony having to say along that line. Um yes conditions when we say conditions i mean it looks like a hard word but it's just that there are things you need to settle god requires some things before he can you know give you that platform like pastor said it's a platform to fulfill your destiny and it is god that is going to give you the platform just like the earthly godfathers and all, they have conditions that people have to meet for them to be supported. So for Joseph, what did he have to do to get that platform of being a prime minister? For Moses, what did he have to do? You know, God has this prerequisite. God has this condition. It has to be on his own terms, not your own terms. And that is what we're going to be discussing today. So, and this cuts across in our career, in um, our family, and for us, as we are, God has said, we are entering into the land of rest. But just before you enter it, God will set this exam up. So I think Pastor will be doing justice to that right now. Okay. In the book of Joshua, chapter 5, from verse 2 and 3, when uh, the children of Israel were just about to enter into the promised land fully, they've crossed the river Jordan, and it's time to enter full into the promised land. God gave them a very strange condition. Let's look at that. Let's look at the scriptures and look at uh, that condition. Joshua chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. It says, And at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knife for yourself. And circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the ill of their of the first king. You know, they have been in the wilderness for over 40 years. They've crossed the river Jordan. They're just about to enter into the into the land of rest that God Himself say he has given unto their all to them, right from their generation. And God said, before you move in, one more thing you must do: take a sharp flint knife and circumcise all the sons of Israel in the heel of their first king. Circumcision became a prerequisite, a condition before they can enter into promised land. And we we'll keep on the while at this point, if you read down the scripture, the Bible made us to understand that for the whole of the 40 years, those that were born in the wilderness were not circumcised. And those that were circumcised when they left Egypt, all of them have died in the wilderness. And before they enter into the promised land, God requested that they should be circumcised. So what is circumcision? In our own days, particularly in the new covenant, we are not talking about just physical circumcision. We're talking about the circumcision of the art. The art must be circumcised. If your heart is not circumcised, there's no way you can enter into the rest that God himself has ordained for you. There's no way you can find yourself on the platform for the fulfillment of your destiny that God has ordained for you. And while we God asked them to be circumcised, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 6, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 6, God said concerning the children of Israel, he said, now, the children of Israel journey from the well of Benny, Jacon, and 
No, okay, the, um, the story chapter 10, verse 16, sorry. The story chapter 10, verse 16. It, it, it was, God said that you've got to be circumcised so that your stiff nakedness can come to an end. You see, the people have their own strong opinion. They are strongly opinionated. And God said, the only way you can walk with me, that I, it's not going to be in your own terms. It's going to be my own terms. And the only way you can submit to my terms is if you are circumcised in your heart. He said, therefore, this is chapter 10, verse 16. He said, therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be still naked no longer. Why God have to make sure that the first generation that left Egypt perish in the wilderness was because they were they were still naked. They could not they were not malleable in the hand of God. They have their own opinion and they are ready to stick to their opinion. And there's no way they can enter into the platform that God defense has, has ordained for them. So when we talk about circumcision of the heart, let's know it is to help us to uh, uh, align to whatever God will bring in our way, whatever instruction that will be coming to us. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6 now, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, we are made to understand that it is when we are circumcised in our heart that we are able to love God. He said, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendant to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. So why is circumcision of the heart very critical? Number one, so that we will be able to obey God, we will not be stiff naked, and number two, we'll be able to love God because before anybody can enter into rest, there is a test of faith of love that you must pass. We'll be talking about that one in a short while. Okay, thank you, sir. So, from what Pastor has said, just when you want to lay hold on your destiny, just when you are about to get it, God brings a test. Circumcise. And this is, uh, this test, <laughs> I mean, doesn't seem palatable. It's some always, always painful. And, and the key is God wants to know our heart. Are we fully depending on him? Are we taking his path? That he has charted or our path that we want him to bless mm -hmm. so the person that will enter the rest is it will go god's route mm -hmm. god's route not your own so these are the things that god wants us to understand that god will test and test and test until he's sure that he can give you the people that did not align they all died in the wilderness. That's true. So on on alignment, God will not. He doesn't. He doesn't change. Even though the the environment is becoming more modern, more, you know, tech technical uh, technologically aware, God is God. He will not change his standard before he puts you in charge of his people of nations of territories of global assignments he will test and these are the conditions you know like and pastor said there are two tests major tests that's where he wanted to because it, it's simple at the same time it's not simple mm -hmm. so it's love and, and that's what pastor is going to be you know teaching us right now okay thank you so much ma um before anyone can enter into rest, he must be circumcised. Mm -hmm. And the reason for circumcision, just like we saw in the time chapter 30, verse 6, is so that you can love God. You can love God. And once you love God, you will love people. Mm -hmm. That test will always come. For Abraham, for example, 
before he could enter into rest, where God himself has to swore over him mm. that forever, mm. in blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply your seed. God gave him the test of love. I just, God just wanted to see, am I, mm. how much of me you cherish? So God gave me the test, you know the test quite all right. And when he passed, God said, he swore that for him, rest is perpetual. Not just for him, but for his entire generation. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, it will, it will always, before you we enter into your promised land, there will always be a test mm -hmm. of love. A test of love, whether towards God or towards people. Mm -hmm. For some people, it could just be like God is asking you to offer something. It's not about that stuff. It's about you just letting God know that you truly love Him. You see, because the test of love is in two components. It's either you'll be giving something or God will be asking you to forgive. One of the two is the manifestation of the test of love. So the test of love will come. The Bible says concerning our, our, our God, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. So giving is a test of love. And a occasional, when people really want to enter into their rest, God could make a demand mm -hmm. on them. It's not about what you have to give up. It's about what God wants to see in your heart. Mm -hmm. That is God the ultimate as far as this person is concerned? Because... By the time you get to that platform, if God is not the ultimate, you will be carried away. You will be swept away. And God is not interested in that. And that's why he say he will circumcise their heart so that they can love him. And if you love him, definitely you love the people. A lot of times, the test of love could be probably you have to give something to God. Or you have to give something to your neighbor. Or you have to give something to people. Or you have to give up something. It will always come, and you must be on the lookout for it anytime you are at the brink of entering into your rest, because that is going to be the springboard that will launch you into rest. And occasionally, like I said, it could be forgive. Somebody has hurt you, and you have made up your mind never, you will never forgive. You will not enter into the rest, because there's something about unforgiveness that will not make you to be aligned with God. You cannot be on the same page with God and there's unforgiveness in your heart. So it will always come. My prayer for you is that number one, you are allow the Spirit of God to circumcise your heart. You see, in the Old Testament, all they needed to do is to take knife and cut the first skin of this, uh, of the, the heel of the first skin and they are circumcised. But in the New Covenant, it is the Spirit of God Himself as we'll see in the book of Romans chapter 2, verse 29, that help us to be circumcised in heart. The circumcision of the heart is the work of grace of the Spirit of God in us. He said, but he is a Jew. Romans chapter 2, verse 29. He said, but he is a Jew who is not one inwardly, and circumcision that is of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. So the work of circumcision of the heart is the work of grace of the spirit of God. And if this work is carried out in our heart, the expression that we give is in Romans chapter 5 verse 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. It made us to understand that the Spirit of God, Romans chapter 5, verse 5, says, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God had been poured out in our heart by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So when the Spirit of God performed that work of grace in our heart, it poured out the love of God. And once the love of God is poured out in your heart, number one, it will be easier for you to obey God. It will be easier for you to let go. It will be easier for you to let go. Whatever you'll be doing will be from the motivation of, of, of the fact that you truly love God and you're out there to please Him. Oh, wow. Well, as Pastor was talking, so many things were coming to mind. Um, talking about 
whatever you are struggling with you and God is saying, I want this thing. I want you to go this way. I want you to do this. This is the job I want. It's the least paying job, but that's the one I want you to, to, to take. It's not the school you want to go, but that is the one I want. And it's like a battle of opinions. Like, ah, no, but this is the one I prefer. But God says, no, this is the one I want. So when there's a struggle between you and God, that's a test. That's a test. And you see this in when uh, Moses, Exodus chapter 4, uh, Zipporah, his wife, they had been struggling, not circumcising their son. And Moses was about to enter into his destiny of leading the children of Israel, which God had prepared him for from his birth. And God, the Bible says that God came and, and wanted to kill him along the way. And Zipporah quickly circumcised, at the same circumcision, the foreskin of their child and because that was a bone of contention look we all have our bone of contention with god you know that thing that god is saying this is what i want and you are busy arguing mm. until you come to the end of yourself and say look, look lord <laughs> you can have it i surrender mm -hmm. it's the point of surrender that is when you are entering your rest without surrender there's no entering of rest so if there's still a struggle between you and God, is asking you to do something, go into a particular field, serve somebody, and you are still having this, uh, you have not come to that point. And that is where God is teaching us today that he wants us to enter our rest, mm -hmm. but we must pass the test. We must pass, come to the end of yourself, stop the struggle, and surrender. Thank you so much. Be circumcised in the heart is all about surrendering to God. Yeah. You have no capacity in your flesh to truly, with free motive, surrender to God. Mm. And that is why the circumcision of the heart, and like I say, is a work of grace, mm. is a work of the Holy Spirit. All you need to do is to open up mm. to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, come and do your work in me. Come and have your way. Mm. Just like our Lord Jesus Christ, even. Mm at the garden he prayed mm. the first time mm. lord if this cup can be taken away mm. but he said not as i will mm. but as as you will mm. he went the second time he mm. went the third time yeah. and at the third time he had the victory mm. and he was strengthened mm. that is our encouragement to you to today let god have his way you will never regret it. We are here today doing what we are doing because at a point in our lives, we said that God, you can have your way. It wasn't easy like you will see from the word of God. After the circumcision, they had to wait until they, are, they were healed. Mm -hmm. Circumcision could be a painful process, mm -hmm. but is the only process going forward with God. And the interesting thing as we round up, in Joshua chapter 5 verse 9, after they were circumcised mm -hmm. and they were healed, mm -hmm. the Bible made us to understand, God said in Joshua chapter 5 verse 9, He said, then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore the name of the place is called Giga to this day. That day, because of the circumcision, God said he has rolled away the reproach of Egypt. Mm -hmm. The implication of that is that anyone that is not circumcised, mm -hmm. we still have some measure of the reproach of Egypt in that the person is carrying on. Mm -hmm. You cannot fully made it in your destiny unless you are fully and totally aligned to God. You don't need to grow with the reproach of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Let God take away that reproach mm -hmm. of Egypt and you definitely sing a new song. You will enter into your promised land. Amen. You will fulfill your destiny Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's not end this broadcast without giving you an opportunity. If you are there and you've never surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, this is your opportunity today. If you want to give your heart to him, just say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I surrender my, my heart to you. Forgive me of all my sin. I, I make you my Lord and Savior today. Please accept me and make me your child. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. And Pastor will be praying for all of us concerning where we are point of struggle. You know, it cuts across. It could be in your career, your, your marriage, your relationship. God is saying something. I want this thing. Go this path. So, Pastor is going to be praying for us and releasing the grace to obey and to surrender uh, as we round up. Okay, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sending your word to us at this time. I pray for as many under the sound of our voice and they are still having an area of struggle. I pray that your spirit will come now and help them. Amen. I pray that your spirit will circumcise their heart so they can truly love you and let go Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for light. Amen. For some, they need clarity. They are not so sure of what you want of them at this time. I pray for clarity for you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that the light of God will shine. You will know precisely what God is demanding from you at this season. Amen. You will fulfill it and you will enter into your rest. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray for as many that are struggling in their career or as many that are in one vocation or one relationship that they ought not to be at this time and they needed to take a shift, they needed to, 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 move, to move with God. I pray for grace to release unto you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever is it that you are holding on to now that is injurious to your destiny, I pray for grace to let go Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for everything. You, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I want to appreciate Pastor Tony for joining us today. I know that you'll be mightily blessed by our presence. We'll continue with um, this topic as we'll be rounding it up in our next uh, broadcast. Make it a date with the Lord and you will definitely enter into rest. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. Amen. That you must go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must experience the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When you have been born again, when you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have everything it takes to have a victorious, glorious Christian life. In the name that is above every other name, by the light of the Word of God today, your eyes are open. There is something about giving sight to people that is crucial to their destiny.